So today we have an inverter. Let's open this guy up and I will show you. I'm kind of excited because this is something relatively new for me. So here is the user manual. A couple of wires. Note how thin those wires are. That might be giving you a little hint to what is in store. Here is the inverter. Let's take it out of the packaging. If you guys have noticed anything unusual yet. This is a 48 volt inverter. It's by a company called XYZ. I, I have no idea how to pronounce that, but that's the name of the company. It's got four outlet receptacles on that side. It is a 48 volt, 120 volt output, 60 hertz, 2000 watt inverter. And today we are going to be reviewing this. You know what? Reviewing this seems kind of boring. I think what we need to do today is build a 48 volt DIY power station using this inverter. What do you think? That sounds like a lot of fun. And then we can run it through some tests once it's built. But I think that is going to make a much more interesting video. So I am going to make a 48 volt power station DIY build using this guy as the inverter. Stay tuned, hang out, let's have some fun. So here's my thinking. To do a test on an inverter, you got to hook it up to a battery. So if I hook up a solar charge controller, now we have a DIY solar generator power station build. So that's my thinking here. So why not just hook up everything and I can show you how to actually use this inverter in a practical way. And we'll still test it. We'll still test the sine wave, still test the output. And we'll still do all of that. But this way you can see a practical way of using it. So as you can see, the first thing you want to do is mount it to something. This is something I've used in the past, so that's why I have it built. But you can use it anything you'd like, mount it any way you'd like. Key to remember, though, is you can't use normal circuit breakers like this. This says it can do up to 48 volts, so you think you'd be able to use it on a 48 volt system. But a fully charged 48 volt battery is actually closer to 60 volts. So for our case, we have to use high voltage circuit breakers. So that's just something to remember. Also, if you're going to be fusing it and you're going to want to fuse between your battery and the system, make sure your fuse can take at least 60 volts as well. And of course, you want to make sure your amperage matches the, the system. But I just wanted to point out that you can't use these. you got to use these. All right, so the next thing up is I want to talk about wire. If this was a 12 or even a 24 volt build, we'd have to use something huge like this, like a two gauge wire that can do well over 100 amps. But because this is a 48 volt build and this is a 2000 watt inverter, we can use much smaller gauge wire. Now I'm gonna use these wires that came with the inverter. The larger the wire, the better. The downside is, is this can be expensive and it's overkill, but just make sure you properly size your wire. So next step is I am going to hook up the um, charge controller and then we're gonna hook up the battery and then we'll run it through some tests. So I'm just using a generic 48 volt charge controller. Nothing special about this. I have a circuit breaker. This goes out to the solar panels. You can see these are MC4 connectors. And then I'm gonna wire this into the solar part of the charge controller. And then this battery part will go to the battery, of course. I got everything but the battery hooked up. So before I do that, I will go over what I did. So here is a circuit breaker going out to the solar panels, comes into the charge controller on the PV side. Then on the battery side, we've got two wires coming out. Red goes to positive, black goes to negative. Then you can see black goes to the inverter, red goes to the red bus bar. Now these bus bars are rated for 100 amps, so they're more than enough. Um, you could also add a circuit breaker between your charge controller and the rest of your system if you'd like. Um, I just put this here just so uh, 
it's really more of a disconnect so I can turn the solar panels off. Um, next thing I'm going to do is slap in that battery and then we can test this inverter and see how good it is. Well, there is our little DIY portable power station generator. Now we can test this inverter. Let's turn it on. You can see I already have it hooked up to my meter and I have all my testing gear. Let's see. We have basically 120 volts coming out. Let's see what that sine wave looks like. We have a nice pure sine wave. Now I'm going to put a load on it. This is um, about five, 600 watts. Let's see if, how it performs. A decent little sine wave. Just to show you, I passed it up. So we got 118 volts. So we got 7.5 amps coming through. So a decent load. And we got almost 900 watts coming through. So at a decent load, nice sine wave, no voltage drop. And um, I have the sound on, you can hear, there is no fan noise. So I'm gonna turn on my, my meter just so you can see. Let's whisper quiet because the fans aren't even on. And this is where you could use it. You could build yourself a simple DIY portable power station. You saw how quickly I did that. And I have videos that go into more detail on how to do a portable power station solar generator if those steps are too quick for you. But essentially, you just need a battery, a charge controller, some wire, bus bars, and a few circuit breakers, and you've got yourself a, um, a decent system. Now, if you notice, I did not fuse between my battery and the rest of the system. Somebody's probably gonna notice that. This is a temporary setup. Always want to put a fuse between your battery and your rest of your system. Did not do that because this is just for demo. I will be taking this apart as soon as this video is done. But there you go. You can see it's been running for a couple of minutes. There's my space heater. I'm going to see if I can put a heavier load on it. See if we can get those fans to turn on. There we go. Let's see how loud it is. Not too bad. 60-ish decibels. So if you're looking for a 2000 watt, 48 volt inverter, pure sine wave for a small solar setup or a, like this here, a DIY portable power station solar generator, I'd give these guys a look. If anybody's built anything like this or you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you are interested in buying this inverter, I have a link below. I'm not gonna talk price because prices always fluctuate but if you are interested, there will be a link below. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to everyone real soon.